everybody so just a really quick update from me this week so i was just having a call with somebody and it made me realize how important it is to spend time outside and connect to the earth when we're going through this transition through the season so it was a work call and i just realized that i wasn't going to see them until january now and i, I said the words have a great christmas if i don't see you before and as they tumbled out of my mouth i was like holy like how did we get to this point because it feels like in my head it's still august and this is like a symptom of just going through life and everything just being so busy and everything being so fast paced and things just kind of like running away with me recently and so it made me really think that what i'm going to do this weekend is really just connect back into the earth you know when i wake up in the morning stepping outside and like breathing in that cool air and looking at the frost and really connecting into what's happening around me and looking at the cobwebs and how they sheen and shimmer with that cold morning air and so yeah it just made me reflect that i need to spend more time outside and be with this be with these seasonal changes because otherwise these things happen to us and we don't really take the time to, to notice or to step back in and kind of realize that these things are happening around us and, and we don't want to miss these these beautiful changes so yeah i just wanted to share that with you so if you're feeling kind of like whoa like it's november and it's gonna be christmas and like ah, don't forget to just be with the season as well it's such a beautiful time you know the crispy leaves those autumn walks these are the things that restore my soul and help me to enjoy this time because if you're anything like me you know you love to wake up when it's sunny and blue skies and everything and i can struggle when the days are kind of cloudy and cold and you don't see the sun for like three days at a time and i think that's really hard so yeah one of the things i try to do is just find beauty in this season and spending some quiet time with mother earth is something that really helps me so yeah i would recommend that you do that if you're feeling a bit disconnected from the season at the moment or perhaps just panicking that time is running away with you just literally just taking that time just to admire the beauty of the season and to spend time outdoors is something that yeah is hopefully going to help me and hopefully will help you too As we've entered into November as well, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is this beautiful book. So it's called A Calm Christmas and it's by Beth Kempton. And this book is just so beautiful and amazing. My mom gifted this to me a few Christmases ago. I still use the tag from that gift <laughs> that my mom gave to me. And I have now a reminder in my phone on the 1st of November every year to get this book out and reread it. The reason why I wanted to share it with you is because it's such a beautiful, amazing book. It talks about, as I was just saying before, the busyness and the chaos of the season, but really reprioritizing and remembering what Christmas is about, what this beautiful, nurturing, going inward season is all about. And this book has just got a really lovely way of talking about it. I'd highly recommend that you check out this book. I think she's done a bunch of others. Like I think she did one on Japanese something, but I wanna get that one as well. But this is just beautiful. And it just reminds us what Christmas is truly about. And it has really lovely stories. It has things about mindful gifting. It's about this period of time now between November and December. And also it talks about that magical gap after Christmas between like the 26th and the 1st of January and how there's like this magical whispering hush like in the air and everything is just kind of calm and quiet and no one really knows what to do with themselves. And so if like me, you use that time to just kind of go inwards and spend time with family, then you're gonna love this book and you're gonna love it even more if you instead run around and go to the sales and the time passes by because instead you should be cozying up by the fire reading books and playing stupid board games. So it's a really beautiful book. I absolutely love it and I've just started reading it again thanks to my phone reminder, which says read Calm Christmas on the 1st of November at 10 a.m. So um, yeah, so I just wanted to share this with you because it's a beautiful book and uh, I hope you enjoy it too. Here's one of the recipes that I'm currently making as well. It's a beautiful Moroccan vegetable tagine. It's using squash, which is perfect at this time of year. So this is just one of the recipes that is warming me and comforting my soul at this autumn transitional time. 
So to make this tagine, all of the ingredients are listed in the description below, but basically you're gonna need all of this. So mostly covered ingredients actually, like spices, chickpeas, that kind of stuff. But yeah, check out the description below. So I'm gonna start by chopping an onion and two or three cloves of garlic and putting those in a pan and adding a bit of water or oil and frying those off for a few minutes. Then I'm gonna prep my veggies. The first thing I'm gonna do is chop up two or three carrots, depending on the size, and just chop them relatively small so they don't take a long time to cook. Same with the pepper, chop that into chunks. And then finally, the squash. So again, into relatively small cubes so that it doesn't take too long to cook. I'm gonna throw all that into the pan with the now cooked onion and garlic and add a bit more water or oil if needed and cook that through. Once that's soft and has had around 10 or 15 minutes just to soften up, I'm gonna add my spices. So I'm doing a heaped teaspoon of coriander, about half a teaspoon of cinnamon, around a quarter to a half teaspoon of turmeric, depending on how turmeric-y you like it. And then a good tablespoon of harissa, which is gonna add quite a lot of heat. So again, it depends on how spicy you like it. I'm gonna throw all those spices in and just let them fry off for a bit and let that cook through. Then I'm gonna chop up around 12 to 15 dates, depending on the size. These are some leftover medjool dates that I had hanging around. So I'm gonna chop these up into small pieces using scissors, best piece of kitchen equipment ever, scissors. We should use them more. So we're gonna chop these up and then chop them into the pan. And these are gonna add that lovely, luscious sweetness underneath that harissa heat. So the liquid for this tagine is one whole carton of passata. You can use chopped tomatoes and I'm gonna add some water to this just to make sure that it's all rinsed out and I'm using every single part of it. And just to make sure there's enough liquid in there as well. So you might wanna top up yours so that it looks kind of like this. So it's got enough liquid to cook through. Now that's all ready, I'm gonna pop that into the oven at around 150 fan, and I'm gonna leave it for around 30 minutes before checking on it once again. Depending on the size of your veggies, depending on your oven and how it works, it might take up to an hour to cook. Mine took around 45 minutes. So just keep checking it every so often until everything's all soft and lovely. Give it a taste. I like to add a bit of extra maple syrup if needed. And then I'm gonna chuck in a whole tin of chickpeas as well and just warm those through to finish it off. Then it's ready to serve. And I love to serve my tagine with a lovely, fresh, zesty, minty couscous, or is it couscous who knows but that's really easy to do so I'm gathering the last of my mint plant here and taking a nice chunk of that and I'm adding that into just some really simple easy to make couscous and adding in lots of lemon juice into that salt and pepper and just mixing that all together to make a lovely zesty fresh base for this lovely tagine Of course, as with all of my recipes, I'm gonna add in a lovely big dollop of coconut yogurt to serve too. One of the other things that's bringing me great joy right now is again, my Riverford boxes. And yes, if you've watched my other videos, you will see that I talk about Riverford boxes a lot, but like, just look at the vegetables and the stuff that came in my box this week. It's like some kind of artistic masterpiece. And this just brings me so much joy. And I cannot wait to cook with these things, the fresh kale, the squashes, like the Romanesco cauliflower, like, oh, it just is happiness to me so um even if you can't get a riverford box just going into stores and really picking out beautiful seasonal foods like the squashes like the cauliflowers like the kales loads of amazing things and there's guides all over the internet over what is seasonal in the uk right now or what's seasonal wherever you live but certainly i've been lo loving like experimenting with all these crazy colorful squashes and yeah just enjoying this amazing nutritional food for the soul also right now I'm reflecting on what is happening in my home. I think I like to do a bit of a transition when it comes to autumn. So using things like fairy lights and candles and just making everything really cozy and kind of hig, if you've heard of that word. I think I've got a book on that somewhere. Okay, I can't find it. I definitely have a book on it somewhere. It's called The Little Book of Hig. And hig is like the word that is, it's like Nordic or Swedish or 
I don't know, it's some amazing Scandinavian place. And um, it just talks about how you wanna just wrap yourself up in cozy blankets and have lovely cozy lighting. So this is also something that I'm conscious of as we transition into this autumn winter time is just making sure that I'm doing what I need to do in order to be cozy and warm. And one of the things I'm not ashamed to admit is that I have just bought an electric <laughs> blanket <laughs> and it's single bed size and I have been using it on my office chair because I work from home. So I'm here like every day and freezing to death because I don't want to heat the whole house. So what I've done is I've put my heated blanket on my office chair, covered it with this cream blanket and <laughs> I will set it up in the morning and let it heat up for a bit. And then I get to sit and be cozy and warm when I work from home all day. So um, yeah, I'm also loving that as well. So yeah, like a proper, proper little grandma. And there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you haven't already. It means a huge amount to me and it helps my channel to reach new people and help new people as well. I will see you next time. Bye.